Well, guys, here we are, deep into winter. Um, you know, cold weather, cold temperatures, uh, pretty much no mercy on uh, any vehicle, regardless of whether it's old or new or, uh, you know, serviced or not. <clears throat> well, of course, the 2009 GMC Canyon's been going good. Uh, no real issues there at all, uh, by far. Um, that's to be expected, of course, with a vehicle like that. The old Silverado um, has been doing quite well. Uh, lately, it's developed a uh, slight issue with uh, with starting. Now, I'm uh, not a mechanic, per se, but I have narrowed it down to being the battery itself. <clears throat> uh, one because while well, there's a little indicator light on the battery that tells you when it's supposed to be good and two um, if it was the alternator uh, it'd be doing something else so uh, let's give it a cold start here and we'll see if uh, it'll start I'll show you that little indicator on the battery I'm not a hundred percent sure how uh, old this battery is you know it could be seven years old could be five years old heck it could be ten years old who knows right a lot of people, when they trade a truck off, they will take out uh, the brand new battery and put an old one that they had lying around in it. So that might have been what happened here. So of course, uh, Chevy 4.3 liter engine, V6. Over here we have a nasty, ugly AC Delco, uh, you know, battery, which uh, leads me to believe that it was replaced one time at factory level. Um, I don't know how to tell if this is a factory battery for the truck or not, but it's probably been replaced once or twice already anyways. But there's a little, um, uh, whatchamacallit right here, this little eye, and it, uh, if it's green, it's good. If it's dark, then it's uh, basically dead. So, which leads me to believe that either the alternator is not putting out the uh, current to charge the battery or the battery itself is, uh, you know, um, wore out or garbage. Now, of course, this truck does have a bit of a stereo in it, which does take a drain on the electrical system. It had a, um, it had a stereo in it before I got it, which was larger by far than the one that I've got in it right now. So. The electrical system was under some kind of load or strain uh, way back and it might have just finally took its toll so uh, I got the old uh, camera here we're gonna do ourselves a bit of a cold start video or attempted cold start video uh, this truck has always started for me even if it's turned over very very slow it's always has started but uh, this time it might be one of the last times it turns over um, you know by itself on this battery Okay guys, here we go, 2003 Chevrolet Silverado, attempted cold start. Okay, dash lights are dim, but she's still starting. 144,902 kilometers, and she still starts on a very low dash. Well guys, here we go. As you see here, the uh, Silverado is still running. You can hear the, uh, the exhaust sound. And yeah, come up to the front of the truck. You can kind of hear the engine sound too. I do have the uh, Canyon running as well, but uh, the, the V6 is still, uh, still rolling. Now, with my experience on uh, vehicles, if it was a bad alternator and the battery's dead, the truck shouldn't run at all, if, uh, if I'm correct. Now, if it's a bad uh, battery, but the alternator's charging, then uh, the truck will still run. But it's not good for the alternator. You go inside here, you look at the battery gauge and it's pulling uh, whatever that would be there just a little over 14 would that be 15 
on the battery meter scale thingy there. And of course, if you were to shut it off and uh, restart it, it restarts good right afterwards. You know? And then if you wait four or five hours, you know, after uh, a break or something, come out to start it, and then, uh, you know, it's, it's slow starting again. So that tells me that um, I think the alternator's working good. It just needs to be a battery. So uh, there's one easy way to remedy that. Uh, we're gonna go down to the auto parts place today and uh, pick us up a, uh, a battery. Now I'm not 100% sure which kind or which one I'm gonna come home with. I've always bought batteries at a certain store and they've always been good in my old trucks, never really given me trouble. Uh, regardless of what, uh, you know, because they're not an Optimal or an Interstate or any other fancy type brand name, um, they've never given me any trouble. So, um, we got the 2009 GMC Canyon there running, warming up. And yeah, we're all go down there and see if we can find it. We got ourselves a, another battery. Uh, this battery here is slightly larger than the one that's going in it. Um, uh, tall wise because it is a top post unfortunately um, unless I go to the dealership it's hard to find a side post battery that's reasonable priced a lot of them nowadays are a multi-fit type of battery so of course throw measurements on your battery make sure it's the right you know length width width and height make sure you have uh, room in it for the uh, post to clear um, with mine I might have a little bit of an issue uh, right about in here because the way this hood comes down this here actually kind of rests um, in here somewhere right so uh, let's have a look at the new battery and uh, you kind of take it from there okay so this is the new battery here guys this one here is a Napa brand uh, legend battery, professional line, um, whatever that means. It's a 850 cold cranking amp battery and as you see here it is dual posts, both top and bottom. Um, slightly larger battery, uh, only thing that may mess me up is the fact that she is a um, top post battery as well. So let's grab some tools and we'll start deinstalling the old battery. So after you've thrown in your measurements and you're um, almost positive that it'll work, uh, start the deinstallation process. So the first thing I'd recommend doing, or the first thing I would do, is uh, disconnect the battery cables. Uh, I always start with the positive one first, then that way the battery is still grounded if there happens to be an issue. Now of course, by unhooking the positive terminal of your battery, um, you're disconnecting all power from your vehicle which basically means all your presets for your radio and uh, all that will now have to be reset which uh, I suppose it's a pain but it's the way she is right unfortunately there's no uh, um, reserve power that keeps uh, presets and that maintained you know um, I imagine maybe in some of the fancier newer vehicles that have all that fancy electronics and pre-programming and all that. There might be some kind of onboard uh, reserve power, but these older ones, of course, um, there's nothing there. So, uh, once you've got the battery cables disconnected, uh, you see here there's a wonderful um, support bar or whatever you want to call her in the way. We'll give that a remove. On uh, this truck here, it is a 10 mil socket. Uh, your vehicle might use a different type of uh, tie-down um, support bar system or have your different size of bolts, right? Of course, if you're working in a nice uh, clean garage, um, you can find a bolt when it hits the ground. If you're working outside or uh, in a dirt floor or something like that, you want to make sure and guard these bolts because they're not the kind of bolts you can find in your local um, you know, Home Depot store, right? And the other bolt here looks like it's also uh, serves a dual purpose. It looks like uh, so. We remove this other bolt here, and then as you see here, that support rod starts to get uh, rather loose. 
if you're working with a top post battery, um, make sure that support rod doesn't touch uh, the terminals because then, yeah, you'll end up with sparks and you could have a larger issue than just uh, uh, changing a battery out. So we'll take that out of the way. And then the next task here is to remove the battery uh, tie down, which is always on the bottom of the battery, usually at the far back or sometimes there's two of them at the sides. So once you got the top post, of course, uh, out of the way, there's a bolt pretty much uh, straight down in here that we can give a uh, loosen off. Now, if you have any other gadgets on your battery, like a battery blanket or uh, um, a little bit of a charger or something, of course, unhook all them first before you've uh, pulled your battery out of the car or truck because that's just one less thing to have to fight with at the time. Uh, one thing I'll say with these newer vehicles is uh, they sure don't give you a lot of room to work um, to stick your pudgy hand down in the middle there to get out a clamp or a bolt or something. The uh, old school vehicles um, you could put a extremely large battery in them and because they had the room so basically this is your uh, battery tie down here it's pretty much a wedge that wedges itself into the tray and in between the battery to hold it down and then there's of course a bolt that fastens it down as well so if you've done everything uh, correctly the um, battery should come right out now uh, watch out for the on this model here watch out for the washer uh, reservoir so um, make sure you're wearing, of course, old clothes for this and uh, old gloves for this because if your battery is at all wet, uh, you could have acid on your hands or on your clothes and it will cause damage to your coat. Okay guys, here you go. Here's a look at the batteries. Uh, this one here, of course, is the new one coming out. Napa brand, uh, Legend battery. Um, 850 cold cranking amps. This one here, of course, AC Delco out of the Silverado. Uh, have no idea quite yet on the year how old this battery is. Somewhere it probably should say, or at one time it probably was a sticker and uh, 600 cold cranking amps so so uh, let's go back over I'll throw you on the tripod and uh, we'll see if we can wedge it back in the hole and hopefully if she works so guys here we go moment of truth well she's in there The uh, post for the top post is about a half inch or so down below the uh, lip of the hood, so that's a good sign. Uh, we'll give the hood a rough test close here to see if she'll close. If she'll close, then she's uh, good to install. Okay, I would call that a good fit, um, good enough anyway. So we'll wiggle this around a bit and get it uh, positioned in the battery tray where she needs to be. Um, there are little covers here of course on the terminals that you'll have to remove um, either before putting it in the vehicle or just prior to connecting the uh, battery cables back up. But uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, tie the battery back down with that little wedge again. Now of course uh, running a bolt back into the battery box to hold the battery in 
um, on a really old vehicle. Sometimes the battery box could be rusted or corroded, which in that case, um, you know, it's recommended to change the battery box because sometimes it will not hold. So of course, don't cross thread the bolt when you're starting it out and uh, you should, should be fine. So we'll start by uh, running this Okay, so once you got the battery in, uh, give it the pull test, see if she comes out. If it doesn't come out, then that means you've got it uh, in there uh, correctly. And you got the wedge in there in place, and everything's the right size for what she's supposed to be. Um, I had one truck that had a large battery tray, and it was like 25 years old or whatever, when it went to go replace the battery. The one that was the correct cold cranking amps actually wouldn't fit in the tray because of the age of the vehicle. The batteries have changed, right? So we'll now connect the uh, posts up. We'll start, of course, with the negative post, which uh, is always the black post on pretty much every vehicle. Sometimes they get tricky and uh, the terminals or the cables ain't marked, but usually the battery, the terminals on the battery are marked too. So we'll connect the back one. Most of the time you can uh, finger start these with your fingers before putting a wrench on them and you don't, never will have an issue. If your vehicle does permit with room wise, you can sometimes use a uh, ratchet and a socket on these. But when you're, if you got tight quarters, you sometimes have to use a flat wrench. So we'll remove the positive um, cable little cup guard here and then we'll install the positive then we'll install the positive cable now of course these are just little lead um, plugs here in the battery so of course you don't want to over tighten them but at the same time you want to make sure that they are uh, tight enough that they're not going to vibrate off on the road and again um, don't be cross threading these Because if you cross thread the terminals, because um, if you cross thread the bolts inside the uh, battery, then yeah, it's not a good thing. You'll end up having to buy yourself a new battery. Okay, so now we have the cables hooked up, the uh, battery and everything, all that pretty much good to go. It's time to put back in the support bar. So basically, you give her a good old tighten down, not too, too tight, but of course, don't leave her loose. And then you got bolt number uh, two here to do. Um, be aware, of course, now you have a uh, battery in front of you that's alive. Don't touch the wrench to the post, especially the positive one. Try not to touch the positive to anything tin, because um, you could end up with sparks, and sparks aren't uh, necessarily a good thing. Okay guys, so battery's all in, bolts are all tightened down, she's uh, not going to go out anywhere. So time for the moment of truth. But pretty much guys, that was a successful uh, battery change. Saved me probably a good... Um, $250 having it done at the dealership just by doing it yourself and a couple hours of your time. So, as always, thanks for watching Rock of All World. Comment, subscribe, and enjoy.